<laughs> Y'all, I'm mad. Y'all, just listen to this. Just listen, listen. This, this, this is just, it's, it's just unacceptable, you know? Like, it's like people think that trombones are just this sloppy, silly, clumsy, like, good for nothing, like, woo woo, we don't know what music is instrument, you know what I mean? And it's just like, it makes me sad. So today, we, we've got to talk about trombones, and we've got to talk about how trombones fit. Oh, there we go. How they fit into the VGM sphere, you know? Sounds good, right? Hmm. So, okay, the first thing I thought was, okay, maybe we just kind of forgot, you know, like Game of Thrones. They just kind of forgot, like, what a trombone is. So there's one. Ta-da! Right? Now, right? Thank you for coming. This was so great. So... I thought that we could just go through some of the parts. I'll just show you what, you know, what a trombone's made of. So you got your good old sound hole, you got your buzz cup, your curve that brings all the boys to the yard, and your slop slop, right? Or, 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 or you have the bell and the mouthpiece and the tuning slide and the hand slide, and it's the magical hand slide that tells us that trombone is in fact, believe it or not, not a trumpet. Did you know that? It's not. It's not that. It's not. Because it's a trombone. You see what I'm saying? Now, tell me very quickly, uh, listeners, can you point to a trombone in this room? Do you see any? Where's the trombone? There's a trombone? Oh my gosh, y'all are so good. Wow. That means that you two are now prepared for this quiz, quiz, quiz. There's a quiz. You didn't expect it. You thought you were safe this early in the panel, but you're not. You're not. Now, here's what we're going to do, listeners. We're going to do kind of a yes, no quiz, okay? You're going you're gonna to vote yes or no. Yes is going to be a rock. Okay, can you show me rock, please, just once? Just make sure we know what rocks are. Awesome. Rock people, good. Can you show me paper, please? Paper, yes. Paper is no. Okay, rock yes. Paper no. Got it? Cool. All right, now, can you tell me, listeners, is this a trombone? What do we think? Very good. Y'all are so smart. This is a tenor trombone. Okay, this is the basic, when you think of trombone, this one. This is what every sixth grader picks up when they start to play terribly, and it usually goes on to about high school, right? How about the next one? Is this a trombone? Yeah, you guys are good. I don't like this. Okay, this is also a tenor trombone. <laughs> it's, got, it's got a like trigger thingy, and it's got some extra piping and stuff, but the range is the same, and pretty much, you know, everything works the same way. Can you tell me if this is a trombone? Is this a trombone? This is a, that's right, it's not very good. And if you're making rock, I'm mad at you right now. This is a monstrosity. Destroy it. It sucks. <laughs> it's bad. We shouldn't like it. I'm sorry, Brandon. I know, I know. But there's a slide on yours. It gives a pass. This is terrible, okay? The slide makes trombone trombone. We don't want that. We want slide for the most part, or sometimes not. Okay, how about this one? Is this a trombone? Mm, what do we think? Yeah, I think so. It is cute. It is cute. Now, we all know about cute things, okay? You can't give the cute thing a name because then that thing comes into your house and eats your kibble and then you have to take it to the vet, right? And you can never get rid of it. But if we gave it a name, it would probably be maybe piccolo trombone, I think. It, it is, it's a piccolo. Look it up, it's true. So it's got a trumpet mouthpiece, but it's got a slide. And that's the heart of the trombone, I think, is the slide. So piccolo trombone, yeah, I think so. All right, we know what trombones are, very nice. Well done. So trombone, it's paperclip, we know this, but what can trombones actually do? You know, because most times when we think of trombone, we think of that sixth grade kid that starts band, and literally a whole year they go, ah, and then they go home, right? That's what we think of when we think of trombone. So what I thought I would do today is with my trombone, I'm gonna show you all some of the things that we can do that are often overlooked or that people don't really think about. So I think, in my opinion, Trombones, this is shocking, it's shocking. You're not gonna even comprehend. 
that we can actually play pretty high. We can play higher than you might think. So I'm going to yell for a second. Can you still hear me? Yeah. Are we good? Yeah. Wonderful. Don't want me. Now, 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 Witch and Bone, okay? I'm going to play middle school range for you, okay? This is middle school. Can you cheer for me, just to help me? <laughs> okay, that's close enough. So trombones can actually play uh, pretty high. We play in the trumpet range routinely, and whenever you hear us in trombone quartets, trombone ensembles, things like that, we're actually pretty, pretty up there. You have to keep in mind that we need endurance to be able to do it, but all the time we play solos in that range. Much, much, much more exciting, I think, than the middle school range, in my opinion. Okay, next, this is even crazier. We can also play... Low. Yeah, we can play pretty low, but we can play lower than you think. I need, hang on, I need the Mac Daddy trombone mouthpiece. Hang on. Hold on. We gotta bust out the big thing. Ta-da! Okay? All right. So... We have the middle school range. It's here. We know this, okay? We also have the first floor of trombone. It's here. Okay, that's usually what we'd hear. We have a basement floor. Did you know this? It's a real thing, okay? Let's see if I can do it. Ready? No. play very, very low. We have what's called a bass trombone. That's all the bass trombone does is just that. Fart city, it's dope, it's awesome. It is so good. I love it a lot. I'm not that good at it, but we try. <laughs> then, crazy stuff, it's getting wilder by the minute, y'all. Trombones, we can play fast. Did you know this? What? It's a real thing. Let's see if I can play fast. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Usually, when trombones play, normally we play like, oh, I don't know. Usually we play like that, but what if I did something like, uh, oh, thank you. What if we did like, I don't know. Okay, we can utilize slide movement. We can utilize partials, which is like the first floor and the basement floor and so on and so forth. We can utilize these to actually play some really fast and awesome stuff. It's so fun and it's something people don't know about us. I don't know. And finally, we can play one more thing in addition to many others. We can play lightly and this is a real big one because I feel like for us, we're just kind of like this blump, blump, blump. That kind of an instrument, but we actually have some finesse. I'm going to see if I have any today. Let's see. All right. We'll try. All right. Thank you for the one clap. That was good. Okay. <laughs> Ready? Let's see. Hmm. That's pretty good. Did I get you with the pedal tone? I hope so. Was it scary? A little? Kind of? Yes. Okay, good. All right. So we know some of that. Now, there's some more stuff that we can do. This is kind of like the fun stuff. We have extended techniques. And this is when trombones make really silly noises that are really dumb. And it's usually when a composer from 2023 wants to be really weird. 
That's pretty much what it is. Yeah, we are composers. We are composers. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to do just a couple of these for you today just to show you a little bit about what we can do in addition to the basic stuff. So let's try one. Let's see. Do you know what a glissando is? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Like, uh, you know. Well, that's okay. But what if, I don't know. What if I kind of up the ante a little bit? Because it kind of sounds like a car, right? Kind of. What if I did it this way? <laughs> kind of like a plane, right? We do a thing called growling. We're taking the back of the tongue, putting it against the roof of the mouth, and we're kind of, and then we get canceled, you know? <laughs> and that's how you make a growl. That's one thing. There's another one that's very cool. We do multiphonics. We can play and we can sing at the same time. What is going to happen? I don't know. But if we did like. Et cetera, right? We can be really creepy, awesome, right? And there's one more that I think will be really fun for you. And I'm going to show it to you first. It's not me. It is this. OK, well, I don't think you should fall asleep to it. That's rude. <laughs> But if you did not already know this, awesome, the Charlie Brown teacher, hang on, who actually knows Charlie Brown? Have you seen Charlie Brown? Are you like me? Oh, thank God. Okay, good. Oh, boy, that was, I was scared. The Charlie Brown teacher is a trombone, right? And the technique they're using calls for a couple of special pieces of equipment that I am going to show you right now. So the first one is a mute, we call it. This is a Harmon mute. And what we do is we shove it into the bell. And when we play, instead of having an aw oh sound, it turns into like an e sound. It's a different sort of, we call it timbre, right? It just sounds different and neat. And, uh-oh, let's hope we have it. Where is it? Oh, yes, we have this. Yeah, toilet plunging. Yeah, OK. This is a plunger. It is from Walmart. That's it. So if we take these two, I'll show you how to uh, do this on the trombone. Let's try. OK, we got our mute. Here comes the mute. OK? Yeah. I love the applause. Keep, keep that up. That's, that's good emotional support. OK. I'm learning so much. Yeah, please do. Yeah. OK? And then we got our plunger. OK? And what we're going to do is I'm going to do this motion. And it makes a wah-wah sound. You've heard it in jazz. You've heard it here. Let's see if I can be the Charlie Brown teacher, OK? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, the real question is, what did the teacher say just now? What was that all about? Practice the trombone, that's what it's like. I don't know. OK. So I feel like we're doing pretty well. We're, we're, we're doing well so far. We know what a trombone is. I've showed you some of the normal techniques that we use, and I showed you some extended techniques that we use, right? Trombones, we're like, we're capable of a lot of stuff. How are we feeling so far? Pretty good? Still with me? OK, great. Because now it's time for a totally useless trombone technique. Time stretch break. Yay! Please stand up. Stand, stand if you want to. If you want to stand, stand. Yes. Stretch with me. It's like three, whatever the time it is, you know? God, we gotta just stretch and get prepared for this totally useless trombone technique. It's gonna be so fun. You're gonna be trombone champs yourselves when you leave. It's gonna be awesome. Okay, today, everyone, our useless trombone technique is triple tonguing. <laughs> triple tonguing using one tongue. Just one, okay? Here's what we're gonna do, everybody. Hopefully, you can still hear me, right? So I just gotta stand up, you know? Oh, what if, what if I just do this? Hang on. What? We could do that the whole time? Well, I'm learning, y'all. Okay. 
So we're going to learn triple tonguing. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you the syllables that make up a triple tongue. This is what trombonists use when we have to play things very quickly. You're going to repeat after me. And then we're going to start putting some syllables together. And then I'm going to give you some time to work on it by yourself. Sound good? All right, here we go, everybody. So first, you will repeat after me. Please say, ta. Y'all are amazing. Play trombone, all of you. All right, repeat after me. Ta. Yes, I'm just, y'all are gonna, you're gonna get me out of a job, all right. And now, please repeat after me, ka. Ka. <laughs> ka. ka. This is really cool. Okay. Now, we're gonna put those three syllables together. Please repeat after me. Ta, ta, ka. Ta, ta, ka. Good. Ta, ta, ka. 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 Okay, y'all are really good, I like this. Now, we're gonna do two sets in a row. We're gonna do two sets, so please repeat after me. Ta-ta-ka-ta-ta-ka. 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 Ta-ta-ka-ta-ka. Yeah, very good, look at y'all. Ooh, okay. So here's what we're gonna do now. Now that we kind of have this, it's, it's all well and good when you do one or two. The real problem is when you have to do it for a long time. It's very difficult. So what I'm gonna do is with my watch here, I'm gonna set a timer for 30 seconds and now you are going to try to triple tongue as much as you can. Sound good? Here we go. In five, four, Three, two, one, go! Triple tongue now, go! Push, how fast can you go? How long can you go? How can you do this? Do this all weekend, annoy your friends and family. Everyone, please. Five, four, three, two, one. Time is up. Very nice, everybody. Good job. You, oh man, you triple tongue. You can all sit down there. Very nice. Thank you. How lovely this is. Okay, now tell me this. If you were able to triple tongue, okay, this sequence, if you could do this five times in a row, raise your hand. Who got five times in a row? That's a good number of people. Very good. How about 10 times in a row? 10 times straight, no stopping. Ooh, lovely. How about 15 times in a row? Who got 15? Couple people, very nice. How about 20, any 20? I didn't. <laughs> no? Okay, that's fair, that's fair. So one place that you have heard triple tonguing, if you have ever heard any media, like Star Wars, we got some Star Wars fans in here, maybe? Yeah, we like Star Wars, so, someone? <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, exactly. If you have ever heard Darth Vader's theme, the Imperial March, okay? It's before the bum, 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 bum. It's before that. It's the very beginning. Da, 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 It's a huge part of that piece. So if you ever go back and listen to the Darth Vader theme, you too can hear the triple tonguing, and now you can do it. Yay! All right. How are we feeling, everybody? We still feeling good? Everything's fine? How are we feeling? So good? Can you cheer if you're good? Please cheer. Awesome, awesome. Boom, it's a bunch of numbers now. Ha, 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 it's boring. It's charts now. Oh, yes. Now we get to do the boring part. <laughs> okay, be prepared for pie charts. Prepare for pie charts and all kinds of silly graphs because I... I very recently, uh, I did a, a, a kind of a random social media poll online because I was like, that's fun. And I asked people if they knew of any like trombone centric or like cool and awesome trombone lines in video game music. And it was a poll, okay, look, it wasn't that many people. I'm not, I'm not that huge, but it was about 200 people, which is a pretty big amount for me. <laughs> 52% of the participants in this poll, okay, 52% said they didn't know anything. Nothing. They didn't know anything, which is, it was weird. It was weird. So I'm going to go into this poll just a little bit and kind of give you a bit of background on who actually, like, took the poll, which might help. And then we're going to look at the results. So first, I did a poll on three different social media networks because this is the only place I have any clout at all whatsoever. First one, thank you, clout, yeah. Um, so first, 
we have YouTube. My YouTube has been growing a lot because of my shorts that I've been doing. So I did YouTube, whatever. And then I did Instagram, pretty big following on Instagram. So I tried that one. And then I tried it Twitter. And it's funny because I found a lot of interesting things about the different social media networks. And personally, I felt like each of these had kind of a certain bias uh, that was unique to each of these different media platforms. So I'm going to talk about those a little bit here. The first one is for Instagram. Now, Instagram, I have, you know, it's grown a little bit. I have a decent-ish number, and a lot of those are, there, there are a lot of, like, musicians or teachers or performers or video game people, and that means a lot of them are older people in general. They're older, like me. And they're also more advanced. They know more stuff. They know more stuff than other people might know. So I, it was interesting, their results, just knowing that there's this variety of age and also musical experience being a little bit more on the high side. Twitter was even more of a bias because everyone that follows me on Twitter, well, they're VGM artists like me. They just make video game covers, and we just listen to video game music all the time. So their results were incredibly biased, in my opinion, in a good way. And YouTube was the interesting one, because YouTube, you know, we, we've grown a good bit over the last, say, like three, four months. And I've gotten a good, like, couple thousand subscribers, and that's because school started. And I had done a couple of educational trombone content reels, and a bunch of people started to follow me, which thanks for following me. But they were mostly people first starting trombone. They were little BB trombone players. They're middle school boys, okay? They're middle school boys. It's weird. I don't know how to, okay, but that's who follows me. So, so most of the people there are junior high kids. And because of that, they're not as old as me, I hope, and they don't know as much in general. They may not have heard as much music as me or a VGM artist or a music teacher, etc. So knowing about these biases, I feel like the results you're about to see, I think, are a little, you know, they, they seem like they explain themselves, right? Isn't it kind of weird? It's weird. Instagram was almost equal. It was almost equal, which makes sense because there's a lot of different people, a lot of older people who are exposed to more music. So it was pretty balanced, right? Twitter was heavily biased because everyone knew about VGM. So they're like, yeah, there's trombone everywhere. Here it is. Ding, 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 ding. And I got a bunch of replies everywhere from some of you. <laughs> I, I did get a lot. Thank you very much. But YouTube, YouTube is the weird one for me. YouTube is the one that really kind of kicked me in the gut because... It's a bunch of kids, so they don't know anything for kids. But so many of these people, not only did they not have a specific trombone line, they said, I don't know any. I don't know any cool trombone stuff, like, at all. I don't know any cool trombone in VGM. And that was so shocking to me because so many of my YouTube subscribers, they're trombone players. What? Why don't they know that? How can they not know about what trombone can do, you know? And I got to thinking, like, why is that? Why is it that the one group of people who should probably know this piece of information, why don't they know that? And I got to thinking, and I got to discussing with some people, and I, I've sort of whittled it down to one sort of concept that I believe personally is harming the trombone world right now. I think it's harming the instrument, I think it's harming the players, and it's harming our opportunities, and that would be perception. Perception. Perf no, no! Ugh. Perception! Perception. The perception of trombone is in a really, it's kind of in a weird place right now. You know, it's, it's weird. And there's kind of like two sister perceptions about this instrument. It's like two sister ideas that sort of feed off of one each other, that sort of make this overall trombone image happen. And it starts with this one that you may all know. Trombone is so silly. Oh my gosh, it's so funny. Oh, trombone. Oh, it's so funny. Lissando, it's so silly. Oh, trombone champ. Trombone champ. Trombone champ. Trombone champ. Okay. It's silly. And and I mean, look, trombone is silly. Y'all know I'm a goof. I love being silly, and I love the trombone being silly. I do love this. But I do think that this idea stems from something that is potentially more harmful, and it happens way before trombone champ, okay? It happens way before that. It happens when you're in the sixth grade, and you're in band, and you play your, uh, 
your, your F and you suck and it's bad and you don't know what to do. And then your teacher looks at you and says, ah, trombone's difficult. It's hard. It's just hard. Trombone is just hard. It's okay. It's okay. Trombone's hard. My band was, you know, they, they were... They were doing the best, but trombones, you know, I, I, I sat in the sixth grade, I practiced like a weirdo, but the people next to me, thank you, yes, practice everyone, but I sat in band and I heard people next to me play awfully, they sucked, I mean, look, sorry, but they did, because they didn't practice, but every day they would come in and they would play a part and they would suck and the teacher would just say, it's okay though, it's okay, trombone's just hard, it's just too hard. It's just too hard. You can't play that fast. It's okay. You can't play that high. It's okay. You, you can't play that low. It's okay. My whole life, I heard this all the time. I was 12, y'all, and I was like, what? That is untrue. I saw right through that. I was like, no way. I saw the potential for trombone. I saw it. I practiced, and I was very hyper fixated on this, like, oh, it was, it was, it was this, this sort of like hyper precision that I knew that trombones could do. I knew that we could achieve it. I, you just have to practice, who knew? But going to school every day and seeing people just come in and blah, 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 and like not getting any better, I just, it was so wild to me that teachers would just brush it under the rug, you know? And because of this, trombone players grow up. And the saddest thing is that when they grow up, they think their whole life, well, trombone's just hard. I can't do that. I just can't play that high. I just can't play that fast. I just can't play that low. And I hate that. I hate that because it, it limits your, your future, you know, as a player. It limits this potential that you have, and you just sort of don't see it there. It's like hiding behind this trombone's difficult curtain. And it's just, it's just uncool, you know? So for me, personally, I just, I feel like this perception is the thing that we have to change. We have to actually see the potential of the instrument and not just what we have right now. So um, I think from now, I'm gonna talk about this, this sort of factor in VGM. We're here for VGM, right? Isn't that why we're here? Okay, cool, we don't care about any of that. Okay, so VGM now. <laughs> So the, the, the factor that I have found listening to trombone parts in video game music, it really kind of boils down to one factor for me personally, and that is control, control. Trombones are slidey and they're loud and they're growly, but there is a difference between playing just and other things. Control means that you're sliding, but you're going to a note and then you're staying there like you should, instead of constantly missing notes, right? A lot of trombone these days, it's not control playing, it's just kind of dancing around a pitch and not really setting on anything. It sounds like you, you don't know where you're going. Now, I know that most of you here, or maybe some of you are not trombone players. How many of you are trombone players, actually? How many do we have in here? Whoa, this is a biased AF panel. Okay, cool. Yeah, bias, bias. Okay, so... A lot of you here probably know what I'm talking about, maybe, but if you don't play trombone and you're like, I'm just here, I just ended up here, someone put me in this chair, I don't know why, then I have a little activity here we're gonna try. So I've got a video here. It starts with some very, I think, not controlled playing. And at a certain point in the video, I believe that the playing becomes more controlled. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna play the video for you. And at the point you, your own opinion, at the point you think that the playing becomes controlled, once you sort of hear that the playing is a little bit more accurate, I would like you to raise your hand. Hmm, sound good? Just a hand raise this time. <laughs> okay, so let's try. Let's see when the control playing begins. Here we go. I think so. I think it was kind of in the middle. Thank you very much. Uh, by the way, big thanks to my husband, Ro Panaganti, who did the visuals for this video. Ro Panaganti, the famous Ro Panaganti of the Ro Panaganti experience, not biased at all. 
Okay, so I think now you have kind of an idea, right, of what controlled versus not controlled sounds like. So what we're gonna do now is uh, I believe I have brought some examples. Finally, some actual video game music, here we go. So we're going to listen to some examples of trombone in video game music. Now, we've talked about controlled versus not controlled. But now I want to judge these based on two new parameters. And those are serious or silly. Now, here's what I mean by this. If at any point the trombone comes in and you think that you as the listener are supposed to smile, chuckle, exhale out of your nose, spit out a drink, or any other form of amusement, okay? That is going to be classified as silly. If, on the other hand, if you hear the trombone come in and it's just like another thing and it, it's nothing to you, if you heard it in the restaurant and you would not laugh, we're gonna deem that as serious, okay? Sound good? Cool. Uh, let's see, what, should we, what do you think? What should we do? Should we do rock for serious? What do you think? Rock for serious and paper for silly? Right? Okay, we're in this together. I want, yeah, yeah I like your opinions. <laughs> okay. So we're going to listen to one now, and we'll see if the first one is silly or serious. Yeah, here we go. Silly, right? Kind of good old Grant. Grant Kirkup, isn't he great? Yeah, we love Grant. So yeah, it's kind of silly. I mean, but you can hear though that the it's not a real trombone, but the playing, it's very controlled though, right? It's very precise, but it's just kind of, you know, silly. It's just silly. But I don't know, it could be worse. <laughs> okay, how about the next one? What do we think about this one? Yeah, I think so, right? It's, it's serious. Like, trombone comes in. It's not a thing I'm supposed to smile at. Yoko Shimomura, am I right? Yeah, any Kingdom Hearts fans here? Do we love Kingdom Hearts? Anybody? Wow, we have two Kingdom Hearts fans. Cool. All right. Three. Okay, great. Cool. So, yeah, I think that this one is definitely more of, like, the controlled and serious type. Also, fun fact, this part here is actually a little bit low for my trombone. My tenor trombone, as you know, this is a tenor trombone, that part there is more like a bass trombone range. It's a little bit lower, you know? So sometimes as arrangers and composers, you have to sort of look at the range and know, okay, am I writing for bass trombone or am I writing for tenor trombone or regular trimmer. Anyway, okay, how about the next one? What do we think of this? serious, right? It, I hope so. I really do. I hope it's serious. Did it sound controlled mostly? Good, good, because that was me. Good. Oh. <laughs> really glad. <laughs> Thank you very much. Ooh. Man, stressful. Yeah, I think this is definitely a, a more serious. I've actually not played the game yet. Whoops. But I think that the theme, yeah, I'll get to it. I think the theme is, um, is actually from maybe one of the like, more intimidating characters. It's like their entrance song. So yeah, I think the vibe is definitely of the more serious sort. Hopefully. Okay, how about this one? Mm. Mm. <laughs> Careful, husband. <laughs> we have to go home together. You better pick the right choice. <laughs> yeah, what do we think? All right. Oh, now this is awesome. Yes, it's divided. This is what I wanted. Raise them high, everybody. I really got to see. What do you think? Silly or serious? Oh, this is awesome. Okay. I see a lot of serious. It's honestly, oh, it looks about 40, 50, 50, 50, about, about half and half. Yeah. And this is exactly how I feel. It's, it's exactly how I feel. There are times it feels, especially with the drums, it's got a boot, boot, yeah. Like it feels like sultry, kind of, you know? But then the trombone comes in, he's like, hey, yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, well, 
Like, it's, is that sultry? It, it, but then, like, the beginning part was kind of, sort of, so I feel like this one is very much down the middle. There's parts of where I'm like, that doesn't really match the tone. And then there's other parts I'm like, that was kind of cool. So even I have some conflicting opinions sometimes. Sometimes. Okay, how about the next one? This one's a fun one, maybe. It's going to change versions right here. about this that says like trombone you're so silly oh it's funny I feel like it's just trombone stuff and I really wanted to include this because I am narcissistic and I wanted you to hear my playing but yeah Alice in Mind trombone uh, but the other thing I really wanted to show you with this specifically is that the solo at the end you can hear right it was very obnoxious and it was ugly right but it very clearly went somewhere it has this big and immediately, bam, and you lock. And then you have these locked rhythms afterwards. So for me, it's really important if I'm going to do something really stupid like that, that it's used for effect. It's not all the time, right? It's for a special moment, and then it goes back to hopefully something that's more, eh, you know, fine. <laughs> it was fine. <laughs> okay. Now, I believe, if I remember my own PowerPoint, we'll see. I have one more uh, track that I want to show you, and uh, this one is from actually a television show that you may or may not have seen, and it came out pretty recently, and this track to me has one of the best uses of trombone that I have heard in a very, very long time, and it's not meant to be laughed at, it's not meant to be silly, it's straight up wrinkle your nose and vibe, okay? I hope that you do the same, and we'll, uh, we'll listen to it really quick. And, and just for reference, and because I've not played in a long time and now I'm cold, I gotta play again. Let me just, I wanna make sure we know about what this, this F thing is, okay? So, so we have, we have this, this, this middle schooler F. Remember, remember the middle school F, remember that? Yeah. Like 30 minutes ago, wasn't that a good memory? Yeah. Huh. Aren't you feeling like, for nostalgic purposes, I'm gonna play it one more time, ready? Weren't those the good old days? Yeah. Okay. Now I'm gonna play the low F, the low one. Okay, awesome. Now I'm going to attempt the pedal F, okay? This is the basement floor F. We're gonna see what happens, okay. Yeah, so the last note of this song is a legitimate pedal F at like super loud volume and it's all three trombones going mm. It is so dope. Please listen to this with headphones in a bathtub or wherever. Like, it's so good. It's so good. Like, I haven't heard anything. This is very like trombone centric. So much music like this, it always goes to the freaking horns. It's always the horn, the French horn. Yeah, Star Wars, doo -doo, whatever. They always get the horn parts all the time and they never give it to us, but this is very specifically trombone. And I love that because we never get the spotlight. So this, this track is pretty, uh, pretty near and dear to me, in my opinion. <laughs> Who, uh, yeah. Who, uh, who's seen Loki, by the way? Has anybody seen Loki? Oh, good number of you. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Now, let's see here. But Allison, oh. Zelda trombone parts are fun. They're loud and obnoxious, and everyone loves them. So 
what's the problem? Um, Screen Alley, you have to think of the bigger picture here. Uh, I mean, this is all the picture I have to work with, so you're going to have to help me out here. Okay, well, you know, Screen Alley, can you think of any Zelda song that's not just like obnoxious, not controlled, wah wah, blue blue playing? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. See? See? I'm telling you. Okay, I kind of see your point now. Yeah, I know. Okay, so now I'm going to tell you guys a story. And it's going to be really nice. Yes. Um, but no, you, you don't need to be there. Okay. She's weird. Um, she has no sense of direction either. Why is she looking that way, weirdo? What a weirdo. Okay. So I want to tell you all a story very near and dear to my heart. Um, I think that this will be very moving for you also. So um, there's this story that I came across not too long ago. And it's about, it was basically this little boy. And he, he was a musician, but he basically made it his mission. He wanted to, like, change the world. He wanted to make a song that would just bring everybody together and change the world. And he wanted to, you know, continue to make music that people could come together with and have a good time. And he actually got really famous, you know, like, and he grew up. He grew up making music, and he made a lot of opportunities. And he took every opportunity that came to him. He made all the right connections. And soon enough, he was known all over the world. People knew his name, and they knew his songs, and it was awesome and it just it was it was on you had to be there you know and then one day one horrible dark day there was a tragic horrible thing that happened to this kid and that is this um. No, stop. No, no, stop. No, stop. No. Almost danced. Very good. Thank you. That was wonderful. I love that. Wow, you're such a great audience today. I'm, I'm loving this so much. So poor, poor Rick Astley. All he wanted was just to make cool songs. And then some idiot put this on the internet and he became a meme. And now... And now I'm even going to show you. Let's see. I'm going to go to Spotify if I have service, okay? And I'm going to search for Rick Astley. Okay, ready? Let's see if Rick Astley will come up. We'll see. Well, I can tell you, even if it doesn't, he made a, uh, a single recently that's like, I believe it's called like Never Gonna, Never Gonna something, Never Gonna Stop, I think. It's something like that. And you cannot tell me with a straight face that this poor, poor man did not name his brand new single, Never Gonna Stop, so that when you go to Spotify and you search in Never Gonna, that that stupid song doesn't come up first. There is no way he did not do that. He named this new song, Never Gonna Stop, so that you will not find this anymore. <laughs> come on now. Do you kind of see where I'm going with this, by the way? Do you sort of see what's happening here with, th with this idea? <laughs> So trump trombone is, you know, it is. Trombone is so silly. I love being silly, as you may have seen today. I love being silly. I love being silly on the trombone. I love playing loudly and obnoxiously. Ask my husband. I love it. He has to deal with it all the time, you know. But I, I think that because we're just sort of that, it's kind of our own rickroll. That's all we're known for. We're not known for playing lightly or high or delicately or fast or anything. And it is legitimately hurting our opportunities in VGM. It's hurting our opportunities in orchestra. It's kind of hurting it everywhere. So if anything, I would like you to leave today just knowing about this trombone potential that is hiding behind that curtain of trombone is difficult. If you leave with that, and maybe triple tonguing, if you want to, whatever. If you leave with that today, I will be a very, very, very happy person. Mm. And if you didn't know, my name is Alison Martin of the Alison Martin Trombone Company. Uh, I am a trombone player. And uh, 
by Heartseeker at the Rock, uh, Rock Island. I have an album. Please go buy it. CDs. And thank you for coming to my panel. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Not valves. Come on. Don't use the valves, Brandon. Time and place. All right. So I do believe that we have some time, I really hope. My timer says I do. Um, it's for some questions. There is a microphone right there. If anybody has any questions for me about trombone, about trombone music, about how trombone works, about trombone video games, or about me, about what I do, you have the floor. And if not, that's fine too, you know, whatever. It's just, you know, just me here alone, it's fine. <laughs> totally fine. Good day. Good day. Welcome. Oh, this is awkward. There's one. All right, so um, I did think of this question just a little bit ago, but um, I know you mentioned all the capacity trombone has, and I 100% agree. However, I find myself as a trombonist, especially a bass trombonist, being landed with very simple parts that don't challenge me as a musician. Do you have any advice on, like, just pre-existing trombonists or people who are starting to dig into playing trombone and like seeking out those parts parts of music that will push you as a musician. Ooh, this is a very good question. So this is asking about, you know, trombone players normally get a lot of sort of simple and boring trombone parts. We're not really pushed as much as musicians in the group sphere. So how can we as trombonists take what we've given and really push ourselves to, you know, to get better? Um, and funny enough, uh, my YouTube channel was started basically because of that. I couldn't find anything that was really fun to play. I couldn't really find anything that was challenging to play so I said I'm gonna take some video game songs and I'm gonna arrange them myself and I did <laughs> arranging your own stuff can be very very good I think playing stuff for other instruments can be very good um, I played a saxophone quartet kicked my high knee it was really difficult but very satisfying and the one thing that I actually tell a lot of my young learners I teach trombone students pretty regularly and what I always tell them is if they get a part they always tell me well this part's buying and they'll play it for me and it'll be three half notes and it'll be ha 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 and I'm like, okay, well, you played the note, and you played the rhythm, but I was like, can you play it better? Can you play it with a good sound? Can you play it like you're playing to a baby who needs to go to sleep? And challenging ourselves that way. Can I center the note? Is it in tune? Can I do it exactly the same way every time? Trying to like get your fundamentals to be really, really solid. And that's pretty much all I got, and then you just gotta cry a lot. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, that's a very good answer. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Hello, um, boring non-trombone player here actually asking. So I noticed that there was uh, the differentiation of like silly or serious. And I guess my big question is, what is the difference between silly, serious, and then where you put fun? Because the final piece you showed, or well, you let us listen to, mm -hmm. really felt fun to me. Mm -hmm. And that made me want to say, oh, it's silly. But everyone was like, this is mm -hmm. serious. And I, I guess I want to know the difference therein of like fun overlapping with silly and then fun and serious. Yeah, good question. Yeah, so this is about sort of back to our serious versus silly parameters, right? And the last track that we listened to, Riverside Park, was definitely a more bouncy, fun kind of a track. So at what point is it serious? At what point is it silly? And really for me, and this is on me, I really should clarify, when I say serious, all I really mean is that the trombone is being taken seriously. It's not a gimmicky like, oh, it's, it's just another instrument, right? Like a violin came in and you're like oh it's a violin now so that's really all I mean and even fun tracks as long as they're fun as long as they're controlled and as long as the trombone comes in and you don't think it's just some silly like gimmick I think is what it is okay so yeah. it's just yeah okay thank Pretty you much. yeah thanks hello hello uh, I guess I am a trombone player sort of at cool. least some, yes um, and then uh, so I'm coming at it from a trombone player perspective mm -hmm. You know, who has looked for this kind of VGM uh, music for trombone, and it actually connects back to the first question that we had. Um, and I guess my perspective here is coming from full orchestra arrangements for VGM, and I'm wondering um, what just—it's not a specific question, but sort of what, what are your thoughts on how we can do better with arranging for trombone and e even you know other instruments that don't really get the spotlight, like mm. cello or um, you know, so, so stuff like that, because, you know, I think, you know, even looking at, you know, some, 
you know, music that is arranged for full orchestra right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, lots of, you know, things that look like you, th stuff you got in middle school or high school, you know, mm, you know sure. background, background notes, this kind of bass line. Um, and I think there's a lot more potential for trombone and other instruments. And I Agreed. think, um, mm. you know, how can we go about, you know, making that happen with, you know, a group of arrangers that is just, you know, kind of, starting on their own sure. and starting with that. Yeah. Got you, yeah. So when it comes to arranging for VGM or really anything else, right? Yeah. And like you were saying, it, it's it's more like how can we give these instruments that don't normally have the spotlight the spotlight and how can we write things that are appropriate for the instrument that's going to be both doable and also really fun and unique for the instrument. And I think really the biggest answer I have to that, and it's something I've been doing a lot in my current arranging, is just asking people, asking players, finding a player, saying, okay, what kind of things can you do? But also writing lots and lots of parts, giving them to the players, saying, okay, as a cellist, can you do this? Okay, as you as a cellist, can you do this? Those are two different things, by the way. Because <laughs> there are things that I, as a trombone player, can't do that maybe my other trombone friend can do. So really, I think it's really about communication, just lots and lots of feedback and stuff. And I think over time, I think arrangers will get a little bit more knowledgeable about it. Excellent. Thank awesome. you. Thanks. Hi. Uh, so also trombone player. Yeah. Uh, yay. Um, speaking from the, the, the realm of like improvising and such, who, who do you listen to for inspiration, both um, in your own playing and also for specifically VGM music? What a fun question. Well, who do I listen to in terms of inspiration for improvisation? Just making things up as you go. The great thing is I am terrible improvising. So that's my secret, everybody. I suck. Um, <laughs> so basically what I do is I just go in a booth and I, I sort of hum a few things and then I try it and I go, that was stupid. And then I go back and I do another one until I find something I kind of like. In terms of people I have listened to specifically for like jazz or improvisation, of course there's Marshall Jokes. That dude is dumb. He's amazing. He's one of the best jazz players on the planet. I myself personally very much love Wycliffe Gordon. I love Wycliffe. He has this absolute power that you don't hear from a lot of players. It's just raunchy, but controlled. But also he has this amazing finesse. He can sing through the instrument with just this lightness that, and he's this huge hulking dude. You would never even imagine that that sound would come from this guy's bell. So I really like Wycliffe Gordon just because I've heard him in so many contexts. Yeah, that's about it. And who was the first person you said? Uh, Marshall Jilks, uh, G-I-L-K-E-S. All right, thank you so much. Sure. Hi. Awesome. So unlike the people's previous people here, I am not a trombone player. Ooh. So, but uh, <laughs> I do want to, since I'm a fan of different instruments featuring in genres that are typically not featured there, and when people th hear trombone, they immediately think either jazz band or concert band, and that's generally it. What's the most? Do you have any experience with featuring trombone in other genres that are not tra not traditional and? Ooh, actually, yes. Um, as a matter of fact, I am playing uh, this Friday at 8.40, the Rope Panaganti Prague Experience, which is progressive metal. I'm going to be playing with them. So I've played some metal. I've played some rock. Honestly, a lot of my arranging uh, I've been doing recently has been kind of delving in. I've done some electro swing just because it's fun. Um, I've done, of course, some classical, some modern classical. I've done a few others that I'm trying to remember. I've done some more like electronic ones and such. I, I try to do a little bit of everything, and especially on my channel, I've tried to do a little bit of every kind of genre that I can. Yeah, that's about the best answer I can come up with at the moment. Cool, thank yeah, you. Yeah, thanks. All right, cool. How do you feel about Tremont, everybody? Tremont's cool? We like it? Yeah. It's nice? Awesome. Well, yeah, well, if there's no more questions, um, I feel like I'm good if you are, and yeah, thanks again for coming. It really means a lot. Thanks. <laughs> <Trombone A. laughs> All right, and, and there's the door, get out. Only if you want to, only if you want to, you can stay.